Help, I swallowed my meditation pillow. Hello, I'm here to talk about four ways to make your brain work better. These are four items from a very mainstream, widely ex accepted method to a little more fringy by the time you get to number four. I use these things every day. There are, of course, a lot of ways to exercise your brain and help it work better. These are things that I use before I'm going to do some brain intensive activity like writing or teaching. Number one is sleep. Everyone needs more sleep, unless, of course, you're depressed and you're getting too much sleep, in which case you probably need less sleep. But you know this. This is widely known, so we're not going to talk too much about it. But if you get enough sleep, your brain will work better, your emotions will work better, and you're, you'll have more resilience to things that plague you like obsessive compulsive disorder. So that's number one. Everything else pales in comparison and effect to getting a sufficient amount of sleep. Oh, it's so much easier to go to work and to deal with all the little things that could irritate you if you've had enough sleep. Number two, uh, brain exercises specifically ones that cause you to cross the left-right meridian of your brain. So these are things that help to strengthen um, neural connections. For example, touching your right elbow to your left knee and then your left elbow to your right knee over and over. Very simple if you're physically able to do that, but it also helps wake up your brain. If you are a musician, if you're a piano player, do, do some cross hand playing. A drummer's habit, great, because drummers are crossing their arms and they're doing two different rhythms uh, with their hands. So that's perfect for your brain. Uh, if you are a former brass wind, uh, or brass player, I played euphonium and, eupho and baritone horn in high school and college, you have these scales that you do. This is a B flat concert scale. Well, I haven't played in many years, but it's muscle memory. I know how to do some scales. And I and you know, I know it well enough so that I can do it with my left hand, even though I only played the, the horn with my right hand. What you can do if you know some scales, if you've played these instruments, is cross your hand arms and do uh, do it with both hands. Uh, better yet, make it um, off by one. Start start um, with one hand and then do the other hand one finger off so it ends later or two now this is might be very hard the first time you try it but then it becomes pretty routine cross your arms the other way do your different scales i do this when maybe when i'm brushing my teeth sometimes i tap out a scale i know this sounds a little like ocd itself but i make sure i don't do the same thing every time so it doesn't become a ritual it's just some way of doing one thing with one hand and the other thing with the other hand on the other side of your body uh, I do that in the shower too sometimes. You know, watch one thing, tap out a rhythm with the other with the other hand. These are ways to exercise your brain. Another way, if you're physically able to do it, um, you're probably familiar with bicycle exercises and you can have your hands go at the same time. Well, try having your legs go make circles one way while your arms make circles the opposite direction and then you can reverse that. Now, and if, in fact, um, you can even vary the speed that your hands or feet go di distinct from one another. This will seem, or at least for me, completely impossible the first time that you do it. Um, but then you try it a few more times and it becomes easy. I do this before I'm about to, to uh, write a lot of times because I just want a little bit more confidence. I might be nervous about getting started on a project because I'm not confident in my ability to do a good job. So I want to like give myself a little boost, at least, um, at least subconsciously, at least, at least give myself the impression that I'm helping myself. And I know these things do help waking up, wake up your brain. So sleep, cross meridian exercises, simple as touching elbows to different sides. Number three, are herbs. The most common popular herbs for cognitive support are ginkgo, ginkgo biloba, um, and this one is uh, go-to cola. They, these are two very popular ones. Another one is saffron, a little more expensive, and I don't have any right now, um, but you can buy, I bought these in bulk. You can buy in all sorts of forms. 
there are three basic ways to take herbs for um, to give yourself some kind of health benefit or health support. Uh, one is as a tea. You just boil the water, you, you know, make it like you'd make any loose tea. And you can add other flavors too, you know, add other teas. You can add uh, some green tea to give yourself caffeine because that's a brain stimulant as well. For a more powerful effect, you can make a decoction with, uh, in a little bit of water. So you boil the herb just barely simmering, just above simmering for 20 minutes or more, and then you have a more concentrated liquid with more benefits from the herbs. And um, you can drink that or take that however you want, you can sip it. Uh, the third method, it, which is even more powerful, is to make an extract. So here I took an old jar, uh, well it's old because I've used it for several of these, and I, I mixed in some herbs at, with alcohol, a very, very high proof alcohol or vinegar, if you prefer, and leave it for a month, you know, with mixing it every once in a while. In my case, because I use an alcohol, I used, I put honey in too, so it'll taste better. But what you're gonna do is end up taking it into a, a dropper bottle and just, you know, giving yourself a squirt and some water. And so this is another way of getting the benefit of the herb. Um, if you have the patience to wait a month. But once you do this, it's, you know, I made a big jar of it and um, it really takes a while to go through for me. So these are three methods, sleep, brain exercises, and herbal support. The fourth is a little even more fringy, which is listening to music and tones that are designed to stimulate your brain in various ways. You can look up isochronal or single um, tones that are purported and sometimes st studied to help have healthy brain effects. You can also um, listen to music that um, at different frequencies like alpha waves. Uh, this is representing an alpha wave for uh, creativity. Um, alpha waves to help, and I do this all the time. So I can't work while listening to real music like the Ramones. I need to, if I'm gonna be listening to something, it has to be instrumental and subtle in the background. So alpha wave based music is great for that. Beta waves um, for concentration. And, uh, and theta waves for, are great for meditation or spiritual awakening. So you can find these things on YouTube or probably iTunes and download them and just play them in the background. So once again, you've got sleep, give it a try. Also herbs can obviously help with sleep. I often will take a little CBD or a little uh, skull cap, valerian, <laughs> poppy. I happen to have formerly worked at an, at an herbal store. So I know, you know, a lot of these herbs they're not always available to everybody, but they are great for helping you to relax, to get a good night's sleep. Uh, so, and staying away from um, screen time near the end of the night, that's a struggle for me, but um, it's well known that that'll help you. Uh, that's a way to help, help fall asleep at night. So, um, you've got the sleep, you've got the brain exercises, and by the way, here are two more. There's this and, <laughs> and this, and I'm not going to tell you how to do those because you should have been paying attention in the 1970s when you were watching the children's television show Zoom because that's where those two are from. And, um, and then herbs and listening to while you're working or throughout the day to, um, to music that's based on frequencies that help that are, are the same frequencies that the brain is operating at different states of consciousness. So uh, alpha Alpha Waves for Creativity is the main one that I use. All right, now before we go, I just wanna say that I'm going to record a part two to this video. So look for that where it goes to the next level of brain training to make you a super brain brainiac. So, um, so you wanna look for part two and until then, uh, enjoy, enjoy life. Thanks.